So one of the big reasons for this series on kindness is I felt like there is an acute need for it now more than ever before. It is crystal clear that we need more of it. We need more of it in the world, but we also need more of it in our own lives and in our own hearts. We hunger for kindness. We search for tales of kindness towards people who have been stricken with COVID or people who have experienced loss as a result of COVID. When we hear those stories, we, we light up. We like to hear those. We're drawn to those stories. But really, it's not just right now. When anyone tells us a story of kindness, we are intrigued. We lean, lean forward and we're interested in those stories. Why do we love kindness? Why do we love stories of kindness? Well, it's because our Creator embedded it in us. We have inside of us a deep desire for kindness, to find it in others and to find it in ourselves. We are made in God's image, and God is kind, and therefore we seek out kindness. He is kind. He wants us to be kind. Our God is kind. He said this through his prophet Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah chapter 9. But let the one who boasts boast about this that they have the understanding to know Me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in these I delight, declares the Lord. When God talks to His or about His chosen people, He says this through Hosea. He says, I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. I love the imagery of that. Cords of human kindness is the way that God leads us. He ties us with these, this idea of, of love. And to them, he says, I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, another beautiful image, and I bent down to feed them. What Paul teaches us about kindness is that kindness is supposed to lead us, or God's kindness is supposed to lead us towards life change. This is what he says in Romans chapter 2. Or do you show contempt for the riches of God's kindness, forbearance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance? When people are kind, it shows up in the kinds of gifts that they give. Kind people give tremendous gifts. Jesus is a gift to us from a Father's kind heart. Ephesians puts it this way, God raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Jesus is an expression of God's kindness to us. God's kindness ultimately enabled our salvation. This is what Paul wrote to Titus. He says, At one time we too were foolish and disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. That is entirely unkind. But look, he says this in verse 4, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. In 2013, Syracuse University invited a speaker, an author by the name of George Saunders, to speak at their convocation. Now, I've sat through a few convocations in my life, three major ones in my own life, and I will say I don't remember who spoke, at any of my graduations. I don't remember who spoke about high school, undergrad, grad, don't even remember any of them. I certainly don't remember what they said. I do remember vaguely getting a blank piece of paper when I crossed the stage, a fake diploma, if you will, and then they had to make sure I had paid all the money in the registrar's office before they would actually give me my real diploma. I remember that, but not what those graduation speakers said. But the class of 2013 at Syracuse I have a feeling they may remember. Professor Saunders began his speech with a few jokes, and then he proceeded to say, here's something I do regret. In seventh grade, this new kid joined our class. In the interest of confidentiality, her convocation speech name will be Ellen. Ellen was small, shy. She wore these blue cat's eyes glasses that at the time only old ladies wore. And when nervous, she was pretty much always, which she was pretty much always, she had a habit of taking a strand of hair into her mouth and chewing on it. So she came to our school and our neighborhood and was mostly ignored. Occasionally, she was teased. Your hair tastes good, that kind of thing. I could see this hurt her. 
I still remember the way she'd look after such an insult. Eyes cast down, a little gut checked, or a little gut kicked, as if having just been reminded of her place in things, she was trying as much as possible to disappear. After a while, she would drift away, her hair still in her mouth. At home, I imagine, after school, her mother would say, you know, how was your day, sweetie? And she'd say, oh, fine. And her mother would say, making any new friends? And she'd say, oh, sure, lots. Sometimes I'd see her hanging alone by herself in her own front yard as if afraid to leave it. And then they moved. And that was it. No tragedy, no big final hazing. One day she's there, the next day she isn't. End of story. Now why do I regret that, Saunders said? Why, 42 years later, am I still thinking about her relative to most of the other kids? I was actually pretty nice to her. I never said an unkind word to her. In fact, I sometimes mildly defended her. But still, it bothers me. So here's something I know to be true, although it's a little corny, I don't quite know what to do with it. What I regret most in my life are failures of kindness. Those moments when another human being was in front of me, suffering, and I responded sensibly, reservedly, reservedly, mildly. Or to look at it from the other end of the telescope, who in your life do you remember most fondly with the most undeniable feelings of warmth? Those who were kindest to you, I bet. It's interesting, George Saunders, during his 11-minute speech, he didn't say, go conquer the world or go do whatever it takes to get to the top. He told these young people this, my heartfelt wish for you, as you get older, yourself will diminish and you will grow in love. You will gradually be replaced by love. He said, seek out the most efficacious anti-selfishness medicines energetically for the rest of your life. Err, he said, in the direction of kindness. Do those things that incline you towards the big questions and avoid the things that would reduce you and make you trivial. George Saunders isn't a preacher. And he wasn't addressing a religious gathering. But I am. Child of God, kindness should be a part of your daily life wardrobe. It should be something you put on every single day. That's what Paul told the Colossian church. He said, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with kindness. He said, wear it. Put it on every single day. The Hebrew word that's translated kind in the Old Testament is chesed. And I can't quite do it justice and not transmit a lot of COVID all over you, so you kind of get the idea. Chesed is that word. And it is all over the Old Testament. It's found about 248 different places in the Old Testament. But it's a very large word because while sometimes it's translated kindness, other times it's translated faithfulness or mercy or, or love. It's used in description of interpersonal relationships that are going well. It talks about chesed whenever God has a relationship with His people, whenever He's pressing into community with His chosen people. When it's talking about restoring community members to community members, it uses that word chesed. And if you look up every single use of that word, you would end up with a pretty good translation if it was something like God's merciful, loving kindness. That is chesed. Merciful, loving kindness. Merciful because there are no boundaries and there are no prerequisites. There's no qualifiers. You can be rich or poor and you'll, you can still receive it. You can be of high society or an average Joe and you can receive God's chesed. You can be any color and any position. God isn't waiting for some kind of right behavior from you in order to give you His merciful, loving kindness. You are deserving. Why? Because you're breathing. That's why. That's what chesed is in the Old Testament. And when you express merciful, loving kindness in the world, you are expressing chesed. And when you are expressing chesed, people are drawn together. Drawn to you, drawn to each other. 
And the truth of the matter is, it's easy to get drawn into unkind things. There is a lot of division in our world. Division in our culture, but let's be honest, division in our own families. Division in marriages and division in friendships. Yes, division in our nation, but also division in our own community. It's easy to get immersed in an unkind way of life. But when we express merciful, loving kindness, we are releasing the Spirit of God into the world. We are releasing chesed on behalf of God. In 1941, North Platte, Nebraska was pretty well unknown. They did, however, have a Union Pacific Railroad depot station there in their town. And on December the 17th, 1941, North Platte residents gathered together at that depot because they heard there was a a troop train coming through that carried their boys, Company D, from the Nebraska National Guard. So they show up that day, and when the troop train stopped, it was Company D all right, but it was not the Nebraska National Guard, it was the Kansas National Guard. And for a moment, no one knew quite what to do, realizing these aren't our boys. But then someone pressed forward with their gifts and figured, you know, it's Christmas time and these boys are far away from home. Let's just love on them with what we've brought. That night, there was a woman there, a 26-year-old woman named Ray Wilson. She went home and she wrote a letter to the editor of her local paper. And she asked North Platte to follow the lead of their ancestors in World War I and begin a canteen there at that train depot for troop trains that would be coming through. Little did she know that she would be starting an endeavor that would last 54 months, involve tens of thousands of volunteers, and would serve with kindness over 6 million troops during World War II. 20 trains a day, 3,000 men and women soldiers stopping for just 10 minutes at a time. But in that 10 minutes, they were shown kindness. And boy, did it leave an impression on them. Take a look at a video I found Just talking about it. Just before we got to North Platte, one of the MPs on the train came up to me and uh, uh, said, this next stop's going to be something you'll never forget. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, it's the North Platte Canteen. It'll be the best stop you ever made across the United States. It was just as if they started a factory here, a war factory. Instead of making bullets or making something else, they made food for all of us coming through. I had a glass of milk because we didn't have milk very often in service. Uh, I had a glass of milk. I had a beef sandwich made with homemade bread. I had a cookie. I had a donut. They offered me pie. They offered me cake. They offered popcorn balls. Then they had fruit. I just can't get over how pleased those people were that we would accept what they were offering. I no sooner got off the uh, train and a lady walked up to me with a birthday cake and asked me if it was my birthday. I told her it wasn't. And she said, we're gonna make it your birthday here in North Platte and handed me this beautiful birthday cake. It was an atmosphere uh, that you felt when you got off the train in North Platte that uh, made you feel like you were a hero. Almost half of all U.S. soldiers who fought in World War II made that stop in North Platte, Nebraska. Years later, they would still talk about it with tears in their eyes because they didn't know most of the other people on the train with them. They certainly didn't know anyone in North Platte, Nebraska. They really didn't have an idea of exactly where they were going. And to be honest, they weren't sure if they would ever get to go home. But if they did return home, they would remember North Platte, Nebraska. Because for 10 minutes, somebody was kind to them there. Didn't matter their rank. Didn't matter the color of their skin. It didn't matter what kind of person they were. Someone was kind to them for 10 minutes. Millions of soldiers traveled through North Platte. But thousands 
and thousands of people from at least 125 different communities surrounding North Platte came and made their way there. They baked all day, they gathered gifts, they traveled to the city just to give away kindness 10 minutes at a time. Why did it draw all these people together? Because that's what kindness does. It's like a magnet. It's how God draws us to Himself. This is what the prophet Jeremiah says in in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3. The Lord appeared to us from afar, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Merciful loving kindness is a magnet. It draws people. And Almighty God says to the Hebrews, do you remember how I drew you out from the world? It was with loving kindness. It was my merciful, loving kindness that magnetized you into the kingdom of God. And once you are magnetized into the kingdom of God, you have to use merciful, loving kindness to draw other people into the kingdom of God. Kindness that sees people in need and it covers that need. Sometimes they're in need because they deserve to be in need. They made decisions where it put them in need, but it covers that too. Doesn't hold it against them. That's exactly what our Father did for us. In His loving kindness, He reached down and He provided a covering for our sin and our shame, and He has made a way for us to come back into relationship with Him, even though we've separated ourselves with Him with our sin. And as we allow Him to be a Father to us, the Spirit of Sonship living in us, His Spirit living in us, produces kindness. Produces chesed. Merciful loving kindness. We, like God, will become kind to those in need. We will provide a covering for their faults. And we will show them the same kind of kindness that we have received. Let's pray. Father, thank You so much for showing us kindness. Thank You for drawing us with Your merciful, loving kindness. Forgive us, Lord, when we hoard it and when it stops with us. Forgive us when we have standards for offering kindness that You don't have for us. Lord, help us be conduits for Your chesed. We pray this in Jesus. Amen.